Good day. Okay, my name is Oyewole Kola Oli David, and I'm popularly known as King David. So I welcome you to the official educational consult. And firstly, before we proceed, I want you to do something for me. Please, I want you to click on the subscribe button on your screen so that whenever I post something good, you'll be able to benefit from it. And this is how you do it. After you have clicked on the subscribe button, you will see something like a notification bell. So just click on that too. Please, before we proceed, can you just do that for me? Please. Okay, having done that, thank you. So now we can proceed. Now, in this video, we want to teach um, binomial theorem. Now, the binomial theorem, under, it, under the binomial theorem, we'll be taking the permutation and combination. So the first part of it is what? Permutation and combination. So now, the permutation and combination comes in different ways but the first one i want you guys to know what we call factorial factorial now if you have this calculator here you will see that factorial is um is on is um like the shift side of x to the power minus one the key that is immediately under moved that key that is immediately under moved so once you press shift and that key it will give you factorial you get it now and what does factorial mean for example now you have to um, find the factorial of six six factorial now means six times five times four times three times two times one this is this is what factorial means you multiply um the the rest of the numbers less than that number the all of it you multiply all of them together and that's what factorial means so now we'll be using this often. That's why I have to explain to you what factorial means. So in case you're asked to find what um, 6 factorial is, you just say 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 3 times 1. But instead of it stressing yourself, you can just press 6 and then that key, shift and that key, it will give you 6 factorial, then your answer is 720. Now if you calculate the whole of this, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, it will give you 720. It's just the same way. So now let us continue. Now that is that is that, that for that for factorial. Now um, let's go to permutation. Okay, now when we talk of permutation, permutation is the number of ways n number of objects can be arranged. So when it comes to arrangement, how many ways can social thing be arranged? How many ways can you arrange this, this, that? That has permutation. Do you get it now? That has to do with permutation. It's just a number of ways something can be arranged. So permutation deals with arrangement. Do you get it now? Permutation deals basically with arrangement. And this is the formula for permutation. For example, you have n permutation r. It will give you what? n factorial over n minus r close bracket factorial. This is it. n permutation r now will give you n factorial over n minus r factorial. Do you get it now? Okay, now let me give you an example. For example, you have 6 permutation 3 or 6 permutation 4. Now, how do you solve something like this? 6 is the n, why 4 is the half? Then that means you will do 6 factorial over, okay, let me do 6 permutation 2. That's 6 factorial over 6 minus 2 Close bracket factorial and that means 6 factorial over or well, 6 minus 2 that's 4 right that's 4 factorial and that means it will give you 6 instead of you um, trying to write 6 times 5 times 4 you should know that what you have on that is 4 factorial and that means 6 times 5 times 4 factorial you can stop at this 4 factorial why because 4 factorial also means 3 2 1 Do you get it now just stop at 4 factorial then over 4 factorial so that 4 factorial can cancel 4 factorial do you get it now and then your final answer will be 6 times 5 which is 30 do you get it now so this is how to do permutation of numbers permutation of numbers and I, 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 I told you that we can apply permutation in um, in arrangement in arrangement so when you are looking for ways whereby you can arrange something that is when you can introduce permutation do you get that so I'll be I'll be taking an example under that. For example, now you are being asked that okay, um, five people want to sit uh, on a table of two. Okay, how do you arrange them? How many ways 
can two people sit on a chair, a set of five chairs, five chairs, and it's just two people. How would they? How would they arrange themselves? How would they arrange themselves? Okay, let's take an example here. In how many ways can eight objects be arranged around ten objects? How many ways can eight objects be ar arranged around ten objects? And that means it's very simple. Eight and ten is what you need. And that means is what ten permutation eight is as simple as that. You don't need to stress yourself. Ten permutation eight is going to be what that ten factorial over what ten minus eight factorial, and ten factorial over this word two factorial. So that means you know you can use your calculator directly. So ten factorial over okay. Sorry, 10 factorial over 2 factorial. So that will give us 1, 8, 1, 4, 4, 0, 0. I don't want to waste our time. That's why we just have to do it that way. Do you get it now? So now that's permutation. It just deals with how numbers or things have been arranged. Now it says find the way of arranging four different conical flags from six conical flags. It's just the same way we have solved this one. Do you get it now? So that will be six permutation four. Do you get it? And now, there are times whereby they can ask you um, numbers, how numbers can be arranged. Now, it says there are eight, okay, there's a question here. It says find the number of arrangements which can be made by using the letters of the word Nigeria. So in case you are seeing questions like that, okay, you are given a word like Nigeria. Nigeria. And you have to find how many ways can this word be arranged. The first thing you are going to do is what? Now, count the number. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's do it again. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that will be what? 8 factorial over... Now, you check each of the numbers that you are having there. Check the, no, the, the um, how many times are each of these letters being repeated. For example, N is repeated twice. So 1, 2. That means you have 2 factorial. Any other one that is uh, repeated twice or 3 times? I and I, that's 2. It's also 2 factorial. For example, we have like two and uh, three highs. That would be three factorial. Do you get it now? Then G is just once. One factorial is still one. So we don't need to put that. Then E is one. Then R is also one. Do you get it now? A is one. So that means this is what we are we are having. Do you get it now? So now eight factorial is what? Eight times seven times six times five times four times one. Oh sorry. Times three times two times one. Two get it now. And two factorial is two times one. Then times two times one. Two get it now. So these two two we cancel just four. Then the rest of eight times seven times six times five times three times two times one. Okay, let's do, look for that. So eight, eight times seven times six times five times three times two times. One, okay, so that was one zero zero eight zero one zero zero eight zero. So it will be in ways, 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 ways. That means this word can be arranged in one zero zero eight zero ways. Do you get it now? That's ten thousand and eighty ways. Do you get it? So that's the number of ways which Nigeria can be arranged. Is that you put this N first and the rest of them like this, or you put this I first? Then you can. You can keep trying it up to 10,080 times. Do you get it now? And also now, <clears throat> we also have combination. 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 So let us do that too. Combination. So when it comes to combination, it has to do with choosing or, color or selection. So if you are choosing something out of something, for example, if you are given um, 10 choices and you have to choose 5 out of 10, are choosing five choices out of ten choices. Now picking five out of ten choices rather. So how do you do something like that? That one is combination. And when I ask you, it says combination as stated earlier. Permutation takes into consideration the number of R objects taken from N objects. For instance, if two letters have been arranged from five letters, 
That was that for that. It says, however, suppose we are not interested in the actual number of the letters, but only in the number of selection of the letters. Then the selection. So it has to do with selection. So when you see something like how many um, um, pieces of this can be selected from this, you should know that has to do with what combination. And combination, for example, n combination r, that will be n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial. Do you get it now? So that is um, for combination. This is the formula for combination. So for example, now let's take a question here. It says, how many ways can four boys be chosen from six boys? So how can you select four boys from six boys? It's just as simple as that. Then how do you do that? So that means six combination four. Right? Six combination four. That means, um, if you interpret it with this formula you have here, that's six factorial over six minus four. Four factorial. Six minus four factorial. That means six factorial over six minus four is what? Two factorial, four factorial. And that means is what? Now let's break this six factorial down. That's six times five times four factorial. Let's stop because we have four factorial there. Now, 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2 times 4 factorial. Now, 4 factorial cancel 4 factorial, right? And here, 2 year 1, 2 year 3, right? So that means 3 times 5 is 15. Yeah, 15. 15, yeah. So now that has to do with, okay, 15. Do you get it now? So now you can pick 4 boys out of 6 boys 15 times. Do you, do you get it now? You have 15 choices on how you can pick 4 out of 6 boys. Do you get it now? Then we, have, we also have some questions here. It says, now how many ways can a team of 11 player boys be selected from 14? So that would be 14 factorial over um, 14 minus 11 factorial, 11 factorial. Do you get it now? So if you do it, you will get that certain answer as you are meant to get. Do you get it now? <clears throat> and that's that for that. Okay, so we have, we have other things that we want to do, which is binomial expansion. Binomial expansion. And that's one of the most important topics under this binomial theorem. So I'm going to give you a class work. And having solved that, let me know in the comment section what your answer is. So if you can tell me, you now I told you, I used to tell you that I'm so concerned about um, each of these um, class works I do give you. So please let me know what your answer is in the comment section. Okay, so now how many ways can you arrange mathematics? Yeah, mathematics. And what is the <clears throat> answer for 17, that's number one, number two, 17 permutation 15. So let me see your answer. Okay, now, number three, let me just give you one more. That's 100 combination 56. So solve this and drop it in the comment section and I will be so glad to see your answers. Thank you. And then now let's move to, let's move to, <clears throat> Um, the binomial expansion. The binomial expansion part is very simple if you can understand the basics of it. It's very, very simple if you can understand the basics. And now, <clears throat> I want to teach you what they call Pascal's triangle because Pascal's triangle is very, very needed. Now, um, I said binomial expansion, right? Now, binomial expansion <clears throat> is your algebraic expressions with only two terms, which are raised to a certain power. And now, if you are going to be doing binomial expansion, you know, for example, you are being given something like this, x plus 2y raised to power 6. For you to start splitting it down, x plus 2y, x plus 2y, x plus 2y, then start expanding the bracket, it's a very, very stressful thing. So how do you do that in a very short form? So now, we'll be needing what we call Pascal's triangle. Our Pascal's triangle is very important in this. So now, this is how to draw it. Place one here. And then, all you just have to do is start with one and end with one. Start with one and end with one. Then you solve whatever is in the middle. So here now, you start with one, end with one. There's nothing in the middle. So we just start with one and end with one first. Then you start with one, one plus one, two, end with one. Start with one, one plus two, three. Two plus one, three, end with one. Start with one, right? One plus three, that's what? 4, 3 plus 3, that's 6, 3 plus 1, 4, that's 10, end with 1. Then start with 1 again, 1 plus 4, 5, 4 plus 6, 10, 6 plus 4, 10, 4 plus 1, 5, then end with 1. 
Then start to turn again now 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. So this is how to draw the Pascal's triangle and you can continue like that up to 100, 200, 300. Do you get it now? So most times they will not give you something that will be too burgers for you to do. Like 100 raised to 100. I don't think they can ever give you something like that. So now for example, you have been, you have been asked to calculate for x plus 6 and 2y close bracket raised to power 6. So if you have been, if you have been given something like this, so raised to power 6, that means you are using this, this here. So as you mean raised to power 8, you have to still continue. That was 1, 7, um, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. 8 again, you, you continue till you get to 8. Do you get it now? But now we are asked to do just raised to power 6. So that's why we are going to stop here. And then that means the um, the power we are going to be using is what? Let's just write it down. That's 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. Is that taking? So now, so you, and let me believe that you, you all know how to draw the Pascal's triangle now. Please take note of this because it's going to be very necessary for you in anything that you will be doing in this binomial expansion. Okay, so now let us continue. I'm going to give you a breakdown of how to solve this. A breakdown of how to solve it now. I'm going to give you. So now, power of 6. Power of 6 is what? Is what? 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Right? Now, that means these things will stand as coefficients. Now, the first number here is 1, right? That means one, x will take this 1 as coefficient. Do you understand it now? x will take this 1 as coefficient. So that's question. When 1 stands as coefficient of something, it's still that thing again. So that's x raised to power 6. And x will take the whole of this power to swallow the whole of it. And y will have no power. Do you get it now? <clears throat> x will take the whole of the power, and then y will have nothing. Then it will take the coefficient of the first number here. Do you get it now? So, for example, there's a, a number beside x, which is 2. Mind you, that 2 will multiply this 1 to be 2x. Do you get it now? But there's, because it's just 1, so 1 times 1 is still 1. And it, it still has to be like this. Then, the next one is what? 6. But this time around, this x will be reducing and giving part of it to y gradually. gradually. Take note, this 6 now will reduce to 5. And that 1 that is being taken out will be given to y. Do you get it now? So that's what? Plus 6 is the next, um, what's it called? The next coefficient, right? But now this time around, we are including y. And you can see that y has um, coefficient of 2 already. So this 2, we have to affect this 6. So 2 times 6 is what? 12 x raised to power 5, y raised to power 1. You can see, x has given 1 to y. Then plus, the next one is what? 15. And also y is also involved Again, so if y is involved, the 2 we have to affect the 15 to be what? 2 times 15, that's 30, x raised to the power 4, y raised to the power 2. You can see, x is reducing, y is gaining. Then plus, same thing, 20 times 2, that's 40, x raised to the power 3, y raised to the power 3. Plus, now 15, 15 times 2 again, that's 30, x raised to the power 2, y raised to the power um, 4, yeah, that's it. Then plus 6 again. 6 times 2, that's going to be 12, y raised to, uh, sorry, x raised to power 1, y raised to power 5, right, then plus 1. Now, this time, this time around, x will disappear because by the time x minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and then 3 raised to power 0 is 1, you get it now? So, that raised to power 0 will turn x to 1, you get it now? And x will disappear, then y is having coefficient of 2 and then the last coefficient which is 1 1 times 2 that's 2y raised to power 6 do you get it now? so questions can be asked in this way that in this expansion what is the coefficient of x raised to power 4 y raised to power 2 so if, if you have been asked that in this question what is the coefficient of x raised to power 4 y raised to power 2 the answer is what? 30 do you get it now? so that's how to solve binomial expansion do you get that? That's how to solve the binomial expansion. Uh, then I have other questions here. I have smaller questions here. And yeah, I'm going to give you, going to give you um, another example. Another example. I'm going to give you another example. Then after the example, then I'll, I'll just give you 
the class work. The class work. So that will be four class works that you'll be submitting under this um, video. Is that okay now? Yeah. For example, you have um, something like this. B plus 6, power 4. You know, the power of 4, the other time is what? That's 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So that's 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 is the question, right? So B, we first take the whole of this power and then we multiply the first question. So 1 times B, that's B. That's B is power 4, right? Now, plus. Now, B will be losing power, small man will be giving that power to 6. And then that means they will both take 4 as the next coefficient. Then, so if B is losing 1 power and then giving that power to 6, so that will be 6 raised to power 1. And because 6 doesn't have any Y or B or A or anything, so it will multiply 4 directly. So 6 raised to power 1 is 6. And then 6 times 4, that will be 24 B raised to power 3. Then plus, okay, now 6 is the next coefficient, but now B is given another 1 to 6. 6 raised to power 1, now we now upgrade to 6 raised to power 2, right? That's 36. And then that 36 is going to multiply 6 again. That's 6 times 6. And that's giving us 2, 1, 6, right? So that's 2, 1, 6, B raised to power 2. Now, B is also going to give another power to 6, which means 6 will be carrying 3 power. B will be carrying just one power. Do you get it now? And if 6 is carrying um, 3 power, that's giving into what? 6 raised to power 3. That's 216, right? And that 216 is still going to multiply the coefficient here, which is 4. So 216 times 4. That's 864 plus 864. Is that taking? Now, the last one, S is for B. Because these two will just reduce to 1. Now plus the last one now B will disappear totally and then it's giving the whole of that power which is raised to power 4 to 6. So 6 raised to power 4 is what? 1, 2, 9, 6. And then to multiply the last power, uh, last coefficient, which is 1. So 1 to 9, 6 times 1 is still 1, 2, 9, 6. Do you get it now? So that is that for that. Do you get it now? So it's very simple for you to do that. Just know the Pascal's triangle and know the next thing to do. So once you know the next thing, you don't have any problem. You don't have any problem. Now, from this now, it's asking us to... Um, <clears throat> okay, we, have, we have so many questions here. And I would really love to solve. Okay, I would really love to solve this. Now, there's a part of this question I would like to solve. Because we've been solving the one that has positive. We have not de deal with the one that has minus, negative. So that when you come across a question like that, it's going to be a problem for you. So now, 3x minus 2 raised to the power 5. 3x minus 2 raised to the power 5. And that is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, right? Okay, that means 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's going to be the um, coefficient for 5. Mm -hmm. Do you get it now? So now for this, it's going to be that Okay, sorry for that Now, the power for 5, the coefficient for 5 is going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1 Is that taking now? For us to expand 3x minus 2. Now, the first thing you need to know is what? Now, um, 3x is going to carry the whole of this power. It's going to carry the whole of 5. So that's going to be what? It's going to be what? 3x. First carrying the whole of the power. Did you get it now? It's carrying the whole of the power. And then it's multiplying 1. So it's still 1. Did you get it now? It's still 3x is power. Did you get it now? Then, <clears throat> the next thing is what? It's now involving minus 2. And because it's involving minus 2, minus will be affecting each of it because minus times plus is what? Is minus. Is that taken? So now that means 5 is the next coefficient. And then it's having minus. Now if 5 is the next coefficient, okay, we know that 2 is carrying power of 1. Do you get it now? 
if 2 is carrying the power of 1 and that's minus 2, it's still minus 2, then 3 raised to the power 5 will now be what? Less than 2, 4, then 2 raised to the power 1. Do you get it now? So it has to be in this form. Do you get it? And then to multiply 5, rather, sorry. So that's going to be minus 5, open bracket. So 5, which is this coefficient here, has to multiply it. Do you get it now? Then, we have the next one to be... Okay, the next coefficient is 10. Okay, let's say this... This um, 3x is going to be what? 3, raised to the power 3. Do you get it now? And it's going to give minus 2, power of 2. Now, if minus 2 is having power of 2, there's something I need you to understand that. This minus 2 is, uh, uh, this square is going to, to affect the sign, which is minus 2. Do you get it now? Because um, they are both in the bracket. Do you get it now? So now that's going to be, um, yeah. Then the next one is what? Plus 10. Open bracket. Now, 3x is going to reduce to what? Square, right? Then dot minus 2 raised to power 3, right? That's it. Then plus 5, open bracket. Now 3x is going to reduce to 1. Dot. Now minus 2 raised to power what? 4. Then that's plus minus 2 raised to power 5. Minus 2 is going to carry the whole of it. Just like I told you. So now that's going to be what? Now 3x raised to power 5 will be 3 raised to power 5 because it's going to affect the 3 too. 3 raised to power 5 is what? Is 2, 4, 3. So that means 243 factors to the power 5. Now, this is minus. Now, 5 times 10 is what? And 5 times 2 is 10. And then 3 raised to the power 4 is what? 81. So 81 times 10, that's 810 factors to the power 4. Is that taking? Then, this is going to be plus. Why? Because this minus here raised to the power 2. Minus times minus, that's plus. That will make this plus. Then plus times plus is still plus. Do you get it now? Now, this 3 here is carrying power of 3. That's 27. And 2 is carrying power of 2. That's 4. So 27 times 4. That's 108. 108 times 10. That's 1080 x to power 3. This thing is very, very, very make mistakes. You might make mistakes in this. Now, let us continue. That's going to be what? Plus. Now, this. This minus is minus uh, is carrying power of 3. So minus times minus plus. Then plus times minus is minus. So it's going to give us minus here. Because that minus times plus is minus. So now, 2 is carrying the power of 3, which is 8. 3 is carrying the power of 2, which is 9. So 9 times 8 is what? It's 72. And that 72 is multiplying 10 outside. That is minus 720x raised to the power 2. Then, this... Um, even number here is going to make our minus here plus. So plus times plus, that's plus. Now, 3 is carrying the power of 1, that's 3. 2 is carrying the power of 4, that's, that's going to be what? Um, that's going to be 16. So 16 times 3, that's 48. 48 times 5, that's 240. 240 x to the power. Yeah, x. Just 240 x. Then, this is odd number here is going to make this minus minus. Do you get it now? The minus times plus is still minus. Then 2 raised to the power 5 is what? 32. Yeah, it's just 32 because x is gone. Do you get it now? So the answer is going to be 243 x raised to the power 5 minus 810 x raised to the power 4 plus 100 x raised to the power 3 minus 720 x squared plus 240 x minus 32. So in case you have been asked that, you should find, okay, now you should find the coefficient of, okay, just to cross check. Yeah, yeah, we are correct. So in case you have been asked to find the coefficient of x to the power 4 here, you should know that your answer is what minus 810. Do you get it now? So it's as simple as that. Now let me give you my home classwork, which I would like that you please solve them and drop the, the answer you are, um, you are able to get out of solving it. Please drop it in the comment section. So that's making uh, four classwork. That's making four classwork and I will be I'll be so glad to see the answer to each of them. So now, solve for this 3a minus 2b raised to the power 
eight. Yeah, this is the fourth class one. So thank you so much. I'll see you in the next class.